Good evening and a very warm welcome to the black hole. Uh, Stoicism is a school of Hellenistic philosophy that flourished in ancient Greece and uh, ancient Rome. Today we are going to discuss uh, this ancient wisdom or Stoicism to conquer anxiety, uh, bid farewell to procrastination and manage the looming dread uh, that sometimes shadows one's freelancing journey. आप में से जो फ्री लॉन्सिंग करता है उसको पता होगा कि जब डेड लाइन सर पर हो तो क्या हालत होती है इन सारी सिचुएशंस में वी आर वेरी ग्रेटफुल टू अल्तमुश खान आतिश ही इज स्टैंडिंग ऑन माई राइट जो आज इस मौजू के ऊपर गुफ्तु करेंगे ही इज़ अ फ्री लॉन्सर एंड द फॉर्मर लीड गेम डिज़ाइनर ऑफ दी गेम स्टॉम स्टूडियोज एंड एप्सो लॉजिक्स ही हैज़ वर्क ऑन ओवर वन हंड्रेड एप्स फॉर एंड्रॉयड आई ओ एस एंड पी सी आप सब लोगों की आमद का शुक्रिया प्लीज डू एस अ फेवर एंड टर्न जो सेल फोन्स टू साइलेंट मोड ताकि किसी किस्म की डिस्ट्रैक्शन ना हो और आप भी इस गुफ्तु में शरीक हो सकते हैं वेंदा हाउस इज़ ओपन फॉर क्यू एंड ए आप अपनी क्वेरीज अपना तबसरा सवाल जो भी है आतिश के सामने रखिएगा लेकिन जब आपके हाथ में ये माइक्रोफोन आए एंड फॉर इट फॉर इट जस्ट रेज योर हैंड और हमारी टीम जो है वो आपको ये माइक्रोफोन दे देगी सो दोस्तों लेट स्टार्ट टू डेज टू डेज टॉपिक दैट इज़ टाइटल्ड फ्री लॉन्स मैस्ट्री कंकरिंग एनजाइटी प्रोक्रेस्टिनेशन एंड ड्रेड विद स्ट्राइकिज्म थैंक यू प्रेजेंटेशन आर वी लाइव Hello, everybody. I am Atish, and he has already given the introduction, so I'll just begin straight away. So, stoicism is very popular on social media these days, but it's popular for all the wrong reasons. The reason why it is popular is because it is very like the quotes that these Greek philosophers and the Roman philosophers, all of the quotes they can be put easily on social media, and due to that reason, it's it has kind of become very popular. But people do not have the correct concept. They confuse stoicism. Usually, with the principles that Buddhism has, as you need to totally detach yourself, and you should just let go of your desires, and you know, just just don't desire anything. That's not what Stoicism is. Stoicism is basically a careful balance be- between the things that you want and the things that you already have, and it's also about knowing what is useful for yourself and for those that are around you. It's not just about uh, detaching yourself from desire. It is detaching yourself from desires in a way that they will not affect your daily life. It they should not be that your desires should not be overwhelming you. That's what basically it is about. It's also about not worrying about things that are not in your control. But as soon as you start worrying about things that are not in your control, you start feeling anxiety and you start feeling bad. So let's take a look at what stoicism is. Stoicism is. It is a practical philosophy. It has absolutely nothing to do with spirituality. It is a practical philosophy. It is if you are a Stoic, or if you practice Stoicism, or if you practice the principles, then Stoicism will help you in your practical life, in your everyday life, and it teaches us to live a virtuous life. A person of high moral standards, in other words, it will make you a person of high moral standards. It really depends on the times that you live in because the standards change with time. So stoicism is basically having high moral standards according to the times, and it teaches us to be self-aware, disciplined, and rational. Remember that self, being self-aware. If you're self-aware, you will know your weaknesses. You'll know your strengths. So stoicism puts a lot of emphasis on being self-aware. You should know yourself, and knowing yourself is the beginning of wisdom. As one Stoic philosopher once said, "Tell us it tells us to align ourselves with nature, which is the collective phenomena of the physical world. Basically, it um, asks us. Stoicism asks us not to indulge in human human interaction and in human creations. Instead, it it basically asks us to enjoy what is easily available, which is going out, taking a walk." Enjoying the mountains, enjoying the scenery, as those things are easily available. That's what it basically says. You can't be careful. 
right. Principles of Stoicism for freelancing. Okay, let's take a look at this. So wisdom. Wisdom is one of the virtues that Stoicism has. Wisdom to help make better decisions after analyzing situations. Wisdom, akalmandi in Urdu. Wisdom is basically going to help you analyze situation and it's going to help you make better decisions. Wisdom can also help you kind of understand if I am going to take this project, what the end result will be or what the client wants from me or how I should respond. If you're wise, you will have enough understanding about the overall situation. You will use your wisdom to make better decisions and to respond in a better, better manner. Courage, to pass through hard times such as periods of low income. Stoicism puts a lot of emphasis on courage. It says that you should be courageous. You should be courageous and you should always expect that hard times are going to hit you like a truck, basically. It, it teaches us how to basically be courageous in hard times or during hard times. Justice, being able to stand up to an unjust act from a client, not paying on time when you know for certain that they can. So justice, you should not only be just to others, you should also be just to yourself. Think of yourself in, uh, if, if you were a third person looking at yourself and you, you have to understand that if you are not just to yourself, then you cannot be just to, any, uh, to anybody else. And this is basically one of the core principles of, of Stoicism. And the last one is... Uh, We are experiencing minor technical difficulties. All right. So temperance is to be able to remain calm in situations where the client can make you feel angry. So you have to be temperate. If you get angry, then you will probably say things that the client does not like, or you might, in anger, just say that you do not want to do this, or you do not want to comply with what the client is what the client wants basically and this is not good as if anger takes over you you sometimes even lose your wisdom so don't don't ever basically be angry that is what stoicism says okay freelancers usually worry about fluctuations and uncertainty. So let's talk about this, which is a code by Marcus Aurelius. Is any man afraid of change? What can take place without change? What then is more pleasing or more suitable to the universal nature? And canst thou take a bath unless the wood undergoes a change? And canst thou be nourished unless the fo food undergoes a change? And can anything else that is useful be accomplished without change? Dost thou those thou not see that then that for thyself also to change is just the same and equally necessary for the universal nature. So basically what it, Stoicism says is do not be afraid of change. Change is law. It says that change is law. Things fluctuate. Things can go bad. They can go from bad to worse, from good to even better. And this is what Stoicism always, always says that, listen, if things are going right for you, be prepared for the bad times. Don't let the good times like totally overshadow you, overshadow you and just like, oh, I'm just like riding the high tide. It's, the high tide will eventually, you will go down one day and you have to be prepared for that. Or at least you should keep that in mind that all of the good times that you're in right now, they can change any time. And the thing is that if you are a stoic, you will always take a look at the good things that are happening and you'll say, okay, let me enjoy them to the fullest and then I'll, I'll see what the next day has for me. If Stoicism basically helps you, uh, helps you understand that if you have, it, it helps you treat the good days and the bad days the same way. Basically, nothing outside of your control, any outside event is not going to affect you. That is the emphasis. Treat the good times and the bad times the same way. That is, that is one of the core principles of Stoicism. And Freelancers should know that change is law. Change can be good or it can be bad. You should always take a look at what is the worst thing that can happen and what is the best thing that can happen and what can you do right now to prevent a bad thing from happening and what can you do 
right now to make a good thing even better. Or if, and, and using your wisdom, you can tell, okay, things are about to go bad. What is in my hand right now that I can do? What, what can I play that will make my situation better or at least avoid the bad things that are about to come or happen? Another thing that freelancers should know is control your reactions. If you lose a project, and especially if you're new to, to, new to freelancing, even your first $20, $30, $50, even $5 project might mean a lot. But control your reactions. If you do not get the project, don't let yourself just be, oh, why didn't I get the project? That, it shouldn't have happened. Just control your reactions. You see, and also you have to control your reactions. You have to control your reactions in any case. Even if something turns good for you, let's say you earn your first $1,000 project, don't let that overwhelm you. You've, you've got the $1,000 project, fine, move on. Don't stay there, don't be like, don't be tweeting to everybody or saying, oh, I got the $1,000 project. You can do that, but just don't let, let those emotions overcome you. Do not let your emotions control you. Okay, focus only on the things that you can control. Freelancers, often they worry about things that are not in their control. What is in your control is your portfolio. What is in your control is the proposals that you give. What is in your control is the communication that you do with your client. The end result of that is not in your control. And Stoicism basically says that you should not worry about things that are in your control because if you do, you'll start worrying. Prepare for the worst while cultivating hope for the best. This is another thing that uh, Stoicism says. External things that are not in your control until they are. So basically, you should not worry, uh, sorry, external things that are not in your control until they are. Wanting to control them might cause anxiety. So you should not really worry about external things that are not in your control. You can try to influence them and try to, try to control them slowly and steadily. But you should have a clear, like, clear understanding that this thing is in my control and this thing is not. So I should not worry about things that are not in my control. Another thing is that you should accept, accept things that you cannot do. When you're starting, and when you have got a group of freelancers that have got more experience than you and they have got a better portfolio than you, you should just accept things that you, should, you, will, you will not be able to basically do the things that they can do because you simply do not have enough experience, you do not have, enough, in a, uh, you do not have uh, a good reputation on the platform or that you do not have enough reviews. So do not, do not think that you will be able to compete with the top people when you're just starting. Some people think that they have got a very good portfolio, but they forget that they don't have enough reviews. They don't, don't, they do not have enough, uh, enough testimonials. So they will definitely not be able to compete with people that already have those. So you should accept things as they are. There are certain things that you will not be able to do when you're starting out, or even if you're competing with a, with a company that has got like a million dollar budget to basically spend just on communication with the client, you'll not be able to compete with them. Don't try to create, uh, create a problem by, trying, uh, by attempting to do something that, um, that you'll not be able to do. Wisdom, you should be wise in this. Acceptance, accept things as they are currently, but do not give up the desire to change things. So most people say that, okay, accept everything, you know, just accept everything. That's not exactly correct. You should accept things as they are, but always desire that things, you will work to change things. Most people, do, uh, most people confuse this. They say accept people as they are. Yes, accept their good and bad qualities, but try to get rid of their bad qualities. At least have the desire to get rid of bad qualities. And this should also apply to yourself. So if you, if you think that you lack somewhere, uh, don't accept it. I mean, accept it, but don't just stay there and say that, okay, this is how I am, this is how I'm going to be. If you, have, if you know that you have a problem, Work on it, try to fix it. Probably it will it'll be good for you in the long run. You must understand that there are certain things that you can, cannot do as they are not in your power to do. Again, emphasis on this. If you do not have the power, and in, in fact, there is going to be another slide which is going to talk about this in detail. There are certain things that are in your power. And again, portfolio, proposals, on which platform you want to be, how you want to position yourself in the platform, if you have a budget, you can, uh, where you want to spend that money on social media to market yourself. These things are in your control. The end result is not. You definitely can hope for a good result that you're probably going to earn your first 5,000, 10,000, maybe $100,000 from, from your efforts. But 
your main focus should be only to do the best that you can using the things that are in your control. Because anything else, like if you take a look at the final result only, and that is your basis for success, then you're in for a world of trouble because most of the time you'll not get what you want. Moderating desire. Desire can control you, attempt to control it. So let's say you want to, for some reason, want this thousand dollar project. You should focus on only working with, with that client to kind of influence their decision so that they select you for the project. But if, you des if your desires start controlling you, if you're thinking about this day and night that, oh, I need to get that thousand dollar project, it's going to affect you. And if you do not get that project, you'll be in a very, very bad situation because you'll be sad. You might even be depressed that you didn't get it. So never let your desire control you to the extent that if, if you don't get what you want, you're just going to be hurt and you will not be able to function properly. And this is a very good quote by Epicurus. It is, do not spoil what you have by desiring what you have not. Remember that what you now have was once among the things that you only hoped for. This is basically, uh, well, some people have already said this, but in a different way. It is that you th may have things right now which other people can only hope for. Use them, learn how to use your resources to enjoy life also work towards a better future, but do not forget about the things that you have right now. Then there's another uh, quote by Epictetus. That is, this is, the flourishing life cannot be achieved until we moderate our desires and see how superficial and fleeting they are. Uh, this really, uh, this explains what Epictetus in just one, like a single quote. This was, this was Epictetus' philosophy, that uh, you basically need to know that some of your desires, the thing that you desire, they are very superficial and fleeting, basically. And this is something that you need to know. Because if you desire for something too much, sometimes after you get it, it completely loses its value. So if you are, if you are right, striving hard to get the project, and if you get it after that, you, there are certain freelancers who get a project that they have been working for for several months. And they come to me and they say, we are sick of the project. I wish we never got it. There, there, have, been, there have been cases like those, and more often than not. OK. Margaret, moderating desire. It is okay to want more if it doesn't make you feel poor. That is, that is, that is basically the, uh, the that, that is, uh, I want to emphasize on this. You should never feel poor. Things could be a lot worse, but they could also be, a, a, be a, also be better. So remember that. Regulate desire by appreciating and using what you have today to the fullest extent without injuring yourself. So stoicism does not say that if you have $5,000, just spend it in a single day. It says to use your resources in a way that will help you, uh, help you get your pleasures, but for a longer time. So it, let's say you've got $5,000 in your bank account. You do not want to spend those $5,000 immediately. Instead, you want to probably go to restaurants. If restaurants, you want to go to a restaurant to eat good food. You probably want to go for a restaurant which is slightly more affordable so you can like stretch out those $5,000 and you can enjoy more for longer. So that is basically the concept. Okay, do what you can do and work towards fulfilling your desire without hoping that you will ever get what you want. At least you will learn something good from it. So sometimes when you embark on a journey, especially on a freelancing journey, uh, you should not care a lot about the end result. You should care about the process because during the process you might learn things which will help you adjust and then you can basically still achieve your goals but in a different way because everybody's journey is different. Moderating desire projects. So this is for projects. You know what you, you know you want it, but giving the project to you lies solely in your client's hands. So remember that communication, the proposal, the samples that you send to the client, everything is in your hands. But the, but the end, in the end, the client is the one who's going to decide whether you get the project or not. If you're worried about that, then you will probably, in the, during the process, end up making a mistake. Do not worry about the end result. Your client's will is not in your control. Remember that thing. Using wisdom, you can say things and do things that may help you have some level of influence over them. So that, that goes without saying that you can use your knowledge, you can, use, you can, you can uh, be an expert in front of your client and kind of influence them, hopefully in a way which will, which will kind of yeah, influence them. I, I, would, I was about to say force them, but I'd say influence them to choose you or inspire them to choose you. That is the, that is the, that is the better word. That your client should be inspired to choose you by, by basically listening to you. And after 
analyzing what, uh, what, uh, what you have to say, they basically then, then select you because they like what you're saying and they believe that you can do the job. Instead of focusing on winning the project, use your wisdom to offer as much value as you can to win your client's heart first. This is something that I use almost all the time. Do not focus on how much money you will earn. Instead, focus on how much value you can provide for the money offered. So if you, if you, use, uh, you basically have a project which is it's valued at $500, but actually the value is $1,000, so just tell to the client that, listen, in $500, I can only do this because I believe this is the value that I can offer for the amount that you're giving me. Is that okay? Don't worry about anything else except just offer the price, offer what you can do in this. Do not just, because if you, if you desire to get that project too much, you might end up uh, agreeing to $500, whereas the entire project's worth is $1,000. So do not be unjust to yourself. Marketing desires projects continued. Develop the ability and courage to say no, even in tough circumstances. So sometimes if you know that the value of the work is $10,000, the client says do it in $5,000, just say no. Even if you, even if you are basically uh, in, worse, in a worst case scenario, starving to death, you should still basically have the ability to say no, this is important. You cannot devalue yourself. This is the, that's, that's unjust. Do not devalue yourself. Only focus on offering value first. Do not ever be unju unjust to yourself. Desiring for something too much can make you feel desperate in front of your client. Now, most people uh, that, I, that I've worked with, they use the word please, please give this project to us, we are new, uh, we, need to, we need to basically start a career. They use the word please a lot. Uh, and if they are, they're, it's an Indian, they sometimes say to me, uh, Pakistanis do say to me as well, career start This is not good because at the end, uh, you, uh, anybody who is saying, please is not really offering any value. Like why should the client select you just because, just to be nice? Being rewarded. So in, think of money as a reward. This is all about that. Think of money as a reward or points earned from completing a task. So pretend that you're in a video game. Every time you complete a task, the money is the points. Basically, this is, this is, this is what, uh, what, how a stoic would look at, uh, look at the freelancing, entire freelancing loop. So it is kind of money is the reward for doing good work, for basically helping your client. In Stoicism, you're basically, you're taught to help people and you are rewarded so that you can help more people and you can sustain yourself. It is not that the client is paying you. Think of, think of it like this. The client is not paying you because you need money for food. Rather, they're helping you so that you can help other clients in the future as they are helping you sustain yourself. This is how a stoic would look at, uh, look at the being rewarded part of freelancing. Think of money as a reward or points earned for completing a task. A reward is just if, if, a reward is just if you offer value. So a reward is just only if you offer value. You can be rewarded $10,000 for a $1,000 project if you're offering the right value to the client. And this is something that is extremely important in Stoicism, that you have to offer value to everybody around you. And if you are better at providing value to people around you, then you also deserve to be sustained by them and good people will recognize you and they'll say that, okay, this person, we, 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 want, we value their existence, let us help them the best way that we can. And that, that, that is basically what it is. And do not let them take advantage of your kindness. Sto Stoics usually tell people to be very kind, but do not ever let anybody take advantage of your kindness. This is, this is not correct. In fact, it's, again, it's unjust. Not wanting to be rewarded does not mean you are not virtuous. Basically, if you say that you're going to do work for free, that you're just helping the other person, that's not good because you're giving them the impression that valuable work can be done for free. This is against the Stoic principle. Stoicism will teach you to absolutely offer knowledge and wisdom and, your, and, and offer value to people, but it also doesn't teach you to allow other people to take advantage of you. People, if they take advantage of you, you're teaching them that you can take advantage from other people like me as well, which, which is basically an injustice to the world. You should never let anybody take advantage of you because if they find somebody else who's as good as you, they're going to take advantage of them as well or they'll attempt to take advantage of them.
being rewarded. So these, the, this is how a stoic would use money for protection and sustenance. Appreciating the value of your existence. So this is for this is uh, for a client. When a client gives you money, they're appreciating the value of your existence and the value that you can add in the future after being rewarded. So that is how a stoic would take a look at the money that they're receiving from the client. They'll say they appreciate my existence so that I can help people in the future after, after we are rewarded. We can use that money to sustain ourselves and help more clients in the future. Freedom is offered by money. Using that freedom to help others grow. This is what a stoic does. Help the unfortunate people as much as possible once you feel fulfilled to a reasonable degree. I, I didn't put degree in the end, but it, there should have been a degree. So stoicism would always teach you to basically use the money to help other people grow who are not fortunate as they are working towards a better future for everybody. That is, that is, the, that is one of the core principles of stoicism, which can be applied in freelancing because eventually, uh, let's, let's say you, 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 the only reason why you want to help people is because you want to teach them and then get, get money from them for teaching them. Well, in the end, you're still kind of doing what, uh, what Stoics would say because you're helping them to grow. But Stoics have a very, like a, a rule that if you're wise, you should help other people become wise. So in the end, the world will be a better place. In freelancing, when you help somebody else, uh, help, help somebody else get better, they will most likely come back to you and tell you how they're, how when you help them, they're, uh, how they grew, and you might probably end up learning from them. So it's not going, exactly going to be free. You teach them something, they're going to say, okay, we got this project, we did it this way, we need your help. During that communication, you might gain something from them which you otherwise would not if you wouldn't help other people grow. So it all comes back. Users of wisdom, so these are some quotes. Knowing others is intelligent. Knowing yourself is true wisdom. Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true, true power. That is by Lao Tzu. And don't set yourself up for disappointment. Basically, if you know yourself, you will never set yourself up for disappointment because you will never, ever, ever do something that you think you will not be able to do. You'll never say yes to something that you do not think you'll be able to, able to do. So know yourself first. Know your strengths and only work on those. Of course, you can work on making yourself stronger, but until then, in desperation, in your desire to have a nice luxurious car, don't ruin yourself by accepting things that you cannot do because you'll be setting yourself up for disappointment. Agreeing to do something that you know that you cannot do is unjust. Okay, this is how you can use your wisdom as well. Know your worth and charge according to the value that you are providing. Be rewarded for offering a great solution. Remember this, be rewarded for offering a great solution. That should, be, that should only be your goal. Just that, great solution and a reward for that. Work on gaining wisdom from everything and everyone, from successful projects to failures. If you fail in a project, learn from that what you could have done better. And again, if you focus too much on the end result, you will not be able to, to learn from the failure. And Stoics, you cannot, if you're not temperate, if you don't have control over your desires, you will just never ever be able to focus on why you failed. Instead, you will basically be like, I failed and that's it. And most people say that, gosh, I'm a project, mil jata, bas ho gaya khatam. No, in, I've got a hundred students that I'm training right now. Only two or three of them asked me what I could have done different. Only two or three of them asked me what could I've done different. Others didn't even just say fail project, move on to some, uh, move, move on and they just don't succeed. They're still on the 20, $30, $100 mark. They never ever, they never, never ever level up because they don't learn from their mistakes. Do not reject the advice of wise people. Instead, try to modify what they say that will help you apply their wisdom in a way that suits your current circumstances. So people that are wise around you, first of all, you, in stoicism, when you practice stoicism, you will be able to identify who is wise and who isn't. The people that are wise will offer you advice if you go and ask for them, as that is what wise people do. They, want, they generally want to make other people better. However, you can modify what they're saying to suit your needs, as sometimes what they say might not be 100% compatible, but you should always keep an open mind that you might learn something from wise people. So stoicism places a lot of emphasis on wisdom, and you can only gain wisdom if you sit and talk to wise people. And when you are wise, you will be able to generally make better decisions and you'll generally be able to calculate better and you will be able to 
make more informed decisions and you will be able to also control your emotions and control your desires. So a lot of emphasis stoicism places on wisdom and also on the fact that you should treat bad times and good times exactly the same way. You should just be, uh, I wouldn't say emotionless, emotionless is a, is, a, is, is a wrong word, but you should have emotions, just, not let, just don't let them, don't let those emotions affect you to a degree that will stop you from functioning properly. That is basically what most freelancers, what they do is they're, they're too much worried about uh, me, uh, having ends meet. Well, listen, if you are freelancing, it's a business. When you start freelancing, sometimes projects fail, sometimes you succeed, sometimes you'll earn more, sometimes you'll earn less. The amount that you earn is really not in your control sometimes. You can, all you can do is, if you have earned well, save it using your wisdom. Use, those, use that money in a way which will help you get more projects. If You can only do this if you control your desires. If you have got $100,000, $100, don't immediately go and buy a car if you do not think, if you actually believe that this, you were lucky, because if you know yourself, you know that you'll, you're lucky, you will instead spend them on learning and enhancing your skills, and you'll become a better freelancer as you will know yourself. Using your wisdom, you'll say, okay, I got this, I was lucky this time, I should level myself up. Instead of, instead of I, I want this fancy car, I'll spend this on my, on my social media, <coughs> Uh, on my social media and I'll spend this on learning so that I can improve myself and th that, dr that feeling that I have that okay I don't have, a g I I'm not that skilled that I cannot compete with these top people. I need to be as good as them because I believe I can do a better job than them. So Stoics would actually tell you that you should be on the top only if you think that you can do a better job than the people on the top and that is what you should strive for. And I think that this was the last slide. Yeah, that's it. So this is basically, uh, and we're moving on to QA. Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, one thing you said to win the client's heart instead of uh, getting the project. What kind of things can be done in the it, Okay, so it basically depends on the communication. Sometimes when you genuinely give the client the impression that you want to help them and you don't want their project to fail, they, you end up winning their heart. So Stoics, if, if you talk to a Stoic, they'll say, forget about the money, I want to help you. I want to help you, I generally do not want to see you fail. You've put so much effort into this idea I don't want you to fail as a human being. I want to help you. So if you somehow communicate this to the client, you'll win their heart. If, if it really depends on the communication. It's too broad, but generally speaking, the client will give you the project if they believe that you genuinely want them to succeed. And that is what, you, uh, that is what people need to work on, as far as I can tell. It's not about the money. It's about helping the client succeed and being rewarded for it. So I mean, clients should have this feeling that uh, your work is purely in their favor yeah. or uh, for their betterment of their business. Yeah. yeah. That's the point. Yes. And they should, they should basically uh, know that you're interested in helping them succeed. Interest, you should show an interest, a genuine interest that I want you to succeed and I'm here to help you succeed. Money, yes, of course, money. Uh, I, I need money so I can sustain myself so I can help you in the future. That should be the that should be the mentality. Money is a byproduct of what yeah, you're already yeah. doing. Yeah, it's like it's like points. You know, you complete a video game, you complete an objective, you get points for that. So, okay. yeah. Thank you. Uh, hello, Jisanko. Um I have uh, two or three kind of questions. Okay, the first one is. Um, you seem to know what you're talking about, so, but um, this talk, I have no idea who you are, so I would like to hear a little bit about your background and what you actually do, um, and what your background has been in the sense of what have you done. But, uh, I'm just genuinely curious about it. Uh, secondly, um, I would like to ask about, um, you mentioned training people, so I'd uh, like to ask about that. Who are you training? Okay, that stuff? so I've got 100 students on Udemy. Okay. That, uh, Udemy. that yeah Udemy that uh, asked me regular uh, asked me regular questions, 
And sometimes they ask me some questions which I can tell that, okay, this is not the way they're supposed to be thinking. Like if they have failed, they're like, uh, they, most of them don't ask me where did I fail? Like how did this happen? Why, why did this happen? They're yeah, like, I failed. How do I, how do I basically uh, get my, uh, how do I increase my, how do I change my proposal so I can get the client to select me? They never ever, uh, they never ever uh, think about this, that their communication with the client made them seem desperate. They don't even, they don't understand that and they don't usually, when I try to speak to them that you were, you were, you were being too desperate, they usually disagree. But most of them do not focus on learning from their mistakes. They're just like, this project has failed. Let's move on to the other project. And they ask for me, like I just made a wave a magic wand and they'll start getting projects. And, and me, I'm a, I, I'm a top rated seller on Fiverr. So oh, awesome. that's what I'm, yeah. Awesome, thank you. But basically, most of those freelancers give the impression that they don't really care why they failed. They're just like, just put proposals in quantity and see what clicks. They're not willing to learn. That's the impression that I get from them. Uh, Samnikum, I had two questions for you. Uh, one was a continuation of the question my uh, fellow asked. Uh, how exactly did stoicism help you in your journey? When exactly did you feel that okay, stoicism, this is a philosophy that is pertaining to my um, journey. It's going to help me and I'm going to go forward with this. I'm going to choose this every day every, uh, of my life. When did that happen? How did that happen? And secondly, I wanted to ask you, uh, most philosophies, uh, most uh, concepts on uh, the way we are in life are based on exclusivity. Uh, the way we define them. How exactly can we define stoicism? How exactly can we say these are the set of rules that no other philosophy offers, no other religion, let's just assume, uh, or other set of idea ideologies offer, and this is what stoicism is offering, and this is why it can be beneficial. Thank you. The first question I'd ask, I'd say, is that uh, I was in, I was involved with, uh, I was involved with a certain person, and I, I, I gave them too much power over me. So uh, what happened was, due to that, I suffered dissociative amnesia, and after that, uh, I studied when I started studying stoicism as somebody recommended that, you know, your problem is that you give people too much power over you. That is, that is your problem. So I think stoicism will help you. So when I started studying that, I found out that stoicism can be applied in other areas of life as well, where you need to control your, uh, where you need to make sure that you are in your control, uh, you are the person who controls yourself. I believe that Epictetus said it, that no man is free who is not master of himself. I believe Epic Epictetus said that. So my stoicism helped me by, by kind of inspiring me to master myself and to only worry about things that are in my control and not to allow anyone to control me. Of course, the, I mean, outside powers do control me, like the law and everything. But generally speaking, nobody has a control over me to an extent that it will basically force me to think a certain way and to operate in a certain way. And I should be in control of my emotions and the way I react to things. Other people should not get a reaction out of me. And free, it, it, ha, it helped me in freelancing because it helped me think clearly because when I'm controlling my reactions, I can think in a more, in a wiser way in the sense that if this client is angry right now, why are they being angry or why are they reacting in this way? Have I said something wrong or are they in a bad situation and they are probably having a bad day? Probably that's the reason why they're acting towards me. But if I say to the client that, listen, I do not like your tone. If I immediately say that, that's a reaction which stoics are against. They're there first, like analyze the situation. If the client is actually being, being bad, I have another word for that, but if he's being an A, let's say, <laughs> Right? Then you can actually, uh, then you can, after analysis, you can say, yeah, you're being an A, so just don't, just don't, don't, don't basically, uh, now, I, but if you, if a stoic basically asks you to control yourself, analyze the situation, don't react immediately because the consequence will be bad. What was your second question? Exclusivity and defining. Okay. In stoicism, uh, they have, first of all, there's no spirituality at all, zero. There's absolutely no spirituality. Uh, whereas in Taoism, there is a bit, 
there's just just a bit, but I mean they don't go into the spirit realm, but there there is a, there is a spirituality aspect in Taoism. Uh, in Stoicism, it's it has only to do with the physical world, the practical world. It has nothing to do with the spirit world. Another thing too is that it teaches us to be moderate in everything. It it doesn't teach us to completely forget about the world. It doesn't teach us to completely uh, let go of your desires and big cars or big houses are not important. What they say is that basically wisdom, because Stoic, Stoicism is also about wisdom, you should be wise. If you're wise, you should just have this in your brain that you can, you do want these things, but there is a chance that you'll probably not get them. Maybe because you don't have a head start, maybe because the field that you're in will not get you those things. You have to start accepting those things and start accepting that, okay, I cannot go and have a, a nice juicy steak at a five-star hotel every single day, but I can definitely enjoy, enjoy a steak at one of my local dhabas, you know? So it's kind of, it kind of like, it kind of like basically, uh, it kind of helps a person have a balanced view of everybody around them and of themselves, which no, no other philosophy as far as I can tell does except a bit Taoism does. Taoism does, except that Taoism is too much go with the flow, as in it, it basically says just go wherever nature is taking you. Stoicism, uh, Stoicism or Stoics say that you can have slight influence over fate when you kind of decide to do this and not that. They, they have this concept that you can influence fate a bit, but Taoism uh, is like, no, just go wherever fate is taking you. So that's what it is. Uh, do you have any other question regarding that? Um, can we? Uh, can I ask you questions um, more related to freelancing and less to stoicism? Is that okay? Yes. Okay. So, um, uh, what about the platforms? To so somebody who's just starting out, uh, can you give us like a comparative analysis of the major um, freelancing platforms available? I use Fiverr, Upwork, and Guru. I used to be a freelance a freelancer, and I used to be on People Per Hour. But I can only talk about Fiverr and Upwork because those are the main platforms that I work on. Uh, as far as I can tell, freelancer.com uh, had a lot of scammers. So I kind of avoid that now. Uh, people per hour in game development, the field that I'm in, didn't have enough demand. Fiverr.com has a lot of, uh, like many people go, uh, go over there to get games made. So that has worked for me. Upwork has got a lot of cross-posting, so what they have is they have got a lot of jobs which are cross-posted across, across various websites. So what I found is that on Upwork, the chances of an, a freelancer getting, getting uh, a good project for the value that, that is just, they don't get it on Upwork anymore as the new freelancers have to really, really work at a very low, uh, at, for a very low amount to get things started. So unless you are a student, I don't recommend Upwork. Fiverr is basically more for people who wish to go into freelancing full time as Fiverr markets those people which it believes are basically uh, trying to serve their clientele well. That's what, I've, that's what I've seen. Can you tell us about how you got into your freelancing journey? Uh, I was kind of forced into it. Uh, it, was, it was basically not by choice. It was that uh, I found out that I, uh, that I wasn't fitting in with, uh, I was not conforming well. Uh, to how games were being developed in, 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 in Pakistan and I didn't really have another choice. I got into freelancing, it kind of just came. Okay, um, uh, what was your, I'm sorry if this is personal, but what was your uh, education in? A computer science. Okay, cool, I'm done. You don't need to apologize to a stoic. We're taught not to react to anything. Even if we like something, we don't, we just don't react. Uh, no, not a question, but just two comments. Uh, so freelancing often involves uh, um, uncertainty ambiguity and the situations where you face uh, rejection and crit criticism or aapke puri talk se in sab cheezon ko hi address kiya gaya ki stoicism aur uske jo principles hain 
या ये जो विजडम है इससे आप कैसे एक अपने अंदर डिवेलप कर सकते हैं इमोशनल रिजीलियंस और वो सब सलाहियतें जिसमें आप एनजाइटी की खाई में गिरने से बच सकते हैं सो इट वॉज़ वेरी हेल्पफुल टॉक थैंक यू फॉर इट अब दो हैं चीज़ें एक तो ये कि जैसा इन जो हमारे दोस्त हैं इन्होंने भी पूछा फिर लॉन्सिंग कैरियर के हवाले से तो मैं ये कहना चाहूँगा कि आतिश की इससे पहले तीन चार टॉक्स हो चुकी हैं यहाँ पे आप द ब्लैक होल के यूट्यूब चैनल पे जाएं तो आपको हाउ टू स्टार्ट अ फ्री लॉन्सिंग कैरियर ये टॉक मिल जाएगी हाउ टू कम्युनिकेट विद क्लाइंट्स एंड क्लोज डील्स एज अ फ्री ये दो टॉक्स आज ही के मौजू से मुतलिक हैं तो आपको हेल्प आउट करेंगे मोर ओवर दर इज़ अ वेरी टेक्निकल एंड गुड टॉक लर्न हाउ टू मेक अ वीडियो गेम यूजिंग यूनिटी बेसिक टू डी स्पेस शूटर की एग्जाम्पल है उसके अंदर तो ये अगर आज की टॉक आप लोगों को सीखने में मदद दे रही है तो पिछले टॉक्स में एडवाइस करूँगा कि जरूर देखें एंड ऑन अ लाइटर नोट आपका नाम आतिश है बट यू सीम टू बी वेरी कूल एंड काम गाय सो सो दैट्स इट थैंक प्रॉब्लम नॉट अ लाइट एंड कूल गाय जस्ट हाइड इट वेरी वेल That's that's the beauty of stoicism, right? Yeah. Yeah. You don't let your fire affect you. You might be burning and starving to death, but you don't let it affect you. Thank you, Atish, for your support. Nobody has questions anymore. Yeah. Nobody questions.